Hi guys, welcome back to Farming SA and today I'm going to be showing you how we feed our sheep. Hi guys, okay, we're in the field here. As you can see, the 275 soup up to the 40 to harvester with a uh, chaff cart, as we call it in South Africa, a calf cart and a cart. Um, we're going to be putting our silage or chopped corn because it isn't really silage, we just feed it like this into here. So, how this thing works, usually uh, it's up to uh, uh, maize corn harvester and then it blows the chaff into there and this door here on the back side it swings open and you drop everything out so we're using this as a silage cart and you pull this lever to get the door out so we have to pick this up to our one row silage harvester here for the corn that we've seen in my previous video if not go outside but the link will be up here somewhere and go and watch that video. Now to show you quick controls wise, I've modified this. So the lever from my left side on the tractor he controls the spout up there. So we're going to be chopping off the maze here at the back of my so that when I make the turn I don't trample it into the ground like here. And we get things done. So you're going to see quickly our harvest. And we're going to move on to why you're here to watch how we feed our sheep. So let's get on. Oh. done cutting silage here for the sheep for this week so tomorrow morning going out and show that feeding station because it's the lights pretty bad sun went down behind me yeah so I'll see you next morning let's go Welcome back. Um, it's the next morning here. We go down chopping the corn for silage, as you can say, dry silage. I'm going to show you how we feed our sheep here. But before we start feeding, I want to empty out the troughs, as you can see here. Now, these parts are the rough stubble. Stubble. This is the rough stubble that the sheep can't digest it and digest and so we take it out and when it gets dry, because it's kind of wet right now, when it's dry and we are finished with this patch of corn, we'll put it through our mill with some corn and other mixtures of protein like alfalfa and that will make up our next feed feeding session for part two that can come in this series. So we're going to start by emptying all of the troughs here around me of our liming pen here. The 
pregnant ewes here, ewes here, and they are finishing sheep at a fast pen. So I'm going to get to that, and I'm also going to show you how I feed our foster lamb. It's not really a foster lamb, his mom doesn't have sufficient milk and doesn't really care about him. So I'm going to show you how we feed him, and let's get going. Let's empty these troughs. Use the bucket to get it out, and then from the bucket we put it into our old feeding bag. So it can dry out and we can put it through the mold. I've emptied out all of the troughs here and put it into the bags over there. And now we're going to move to our base feed, the feed that makes up the largest amount in the feed ration, if you want to call it that. And that's our chopped silage here. I'll show you. It's the wagon from yesterday. Okay, let's get in. So, how it looks. You can see all of the corn in here. I don't know if you can, but I can surely see it. So this is what we feed. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how much we feed and so forth. So when I'm going to feed, I'm going to talk about one unit. And with a unit, I mean um, one of these paint um, buckets in South Africa. It's a 20 liter, I think. 25 and I just scoop it up full of silage and then press it in to make sure it's full. So this is what I use when I say I refer to one unit. Okay, so unit wise um, I use these buckets, I fold them up and then I put them into bags and throw them into the troughs which I'll show you later. But unit-wise, we have to have three pens, as I said earlier. You'll see in your screen now. We have our um, finishing pen, which consists at this time of four ewes. Um, one threw a lamb away and they died. And the other three we are going to have to remove from the herd because of old age. And then our second largest pen is our pregnant ewes. We are waiting on them to lamb. We had one lamb last night and they will tell you their ration. And the third pen is the lamb with use in with their lambs and our younger lambs on their own without use. So ration wise, the first pen, the one with the finishing animals, I give two units, two buckets in the morning and two at night, which equates to half a bucket per animal. And that pen has four in, as I said, and our middle pen is our pregnant use. I give about six buckets, six units of corn silage in the morning and at night we give four because they eat less at night and that pen consists of about of 13 animals and our pen with the ewes and lambs in I give four buckets in the morning and three at the night because as our pens they eat less and then the lambs get on their own a protein supplement basis alfalfa that's our protein feed and the ewes that have recently lambed and need to produce a lot of milk will also receive um, protein based feed alfalfa on their own and that's how we mix our feed so this is a lot of corn in which means it's high in energy which makes the animals grow faster as a supplement optional feed as i like to call it we have rings or tire troughs with grass that i've cut from our pastures and instead of letting animals go in i keep them in the yards, feedlots as we, we would say and that's more efficient feed wise because they have to, don't have to move around as much to find feed and to graze it's already chopped up fine so they have, have to use less energy from the feed to digest it all so this is a more efficient way of feeding and this is how we do it on our homestead we have corn silage in this part one of hopefully many parts series that will show you how we feed in different side, ways as the seasons change. So this is our winter feed at this moment. So let's get to filling these bags.
ask you guys a huge favor to like and subscribe and keep watching till the end for more details about how to feed your sheep so thank you all for watching I'm done feeding here um, with the main groups I'm going to move on to the ewes that I have recently lambed here in the lambing house let's see them I'll well, force the lamb right there and I'm going to move them over to my chicken coop over there that's where they stay in the day because it's get hot in here and that's that to show you how cold it gets here in the winter time I don't know, I know it's not the American snow extreme cold but it gets to minus 13 celsius, put a Fahrenheit up here somewhere and this is how the water troughs look it's iced over and to break it see how thick that is So it gets quite cold here for us because we don't have snow but this is the coldest it gets and two days ago it was minus 13 which is pretty much the coldest it gets here and the ice was double that size so i'm going to move on to feeding the rest of the sheep both in here with the lambs i'm going to fetch the bottle milk bottle to feed the foster lamb and check that the other lamb's mom has enough milk, milk, milk. Ooh. Um, enough, uh, enough milk to feed a lamb so I'm just going to quickly fetch the bottle and then I'll show you how I feed these animals so I'm back here with the milk um, it's quite hot here so I took off my jacket so with the milk we feed the foster lamb basically give him 75 milliliters of cow milk because that's what we have and we give that every four hours every two hours um, every four hours it's a two hour interval so the first time we give it cattle milk and then the next two hours in two hours time we will hold the mum still so that he can try and milk get milk out of her so that we can stimulate her after to start producing milk because she's a first time lander and then the next two hours we will give him milk again as you can see he's tasting here at my legs to try and get milk so I'm going to feed him quickly and then I'm just going to look out the hues, the mums here, and see if some of them have milk. I'm just going to take him in between my legs and guide him with my fingers to where the milk are, and he starts sucking. It's quite easy, just keep it above his head at the height that his mother's utter would be. And you see his tail is wagging, which means he's getting in here. And then just let him keep sucking and when he's done, take it away you always want more but you can only take in that much at a time he's trying to get more right now so if you get the chance to have a foster lamb I'd say go for it it's a chance, they don't all make it but if they make it it's quite satisfying seeing a little animal like this grow up with your hope, help we're walking in the shed here where we will get our last part of the feed and um, the feed for our all the lambs to help them grow faster our protein supplement basic alfalfa that is a uh, you know piles of bags that we have milled in the field and that will be a part of another part in the series of how we feed our sheep so i'll show you um i fill up one of these buckets again now i'm measuring units halfway and that's what the lambs get for the day the rats got through this bag so there's a big hole in it so we have to scrape it out with our hands and put it into the bucket let me quickly show you um, so this alfalfa is a little piece that we have here um, we mowed it, let it dry in the sun it's actually got rained on twice we raked it into a row and then put it through our mill and this is how it looks this one is quite rough because it got rain on so much there isn't much of leaf matter and that's the actual important part so it's quite fine it's like dust and when you get this dust in your lungs it's quite irritating and you'll cough a lot like i mean a lot so you'll know when you inhale it and you scent 
and really without their pain will show you how I feed this to the lambs separately from their moms. So in the pen here we have the lamb in use here. Um, we used to leave use the lambing house as uh, my feeding spot for our lambs. And this is the gate that we manufactured. We actually just use the gate, but you can see how it works. Lambs can fit through if they're small enough. And the use can cross by because of these crossbars and the top here. Let's go into the lambing house and I'll show you what they eat inside. So you, you can see them feeding there. Um, there's our two new lambs, the Merino and Dorper Cross. And the four larger ones are our new ewes that we bought. Um, we buy them small. We buy them small and then we raise up, raise them up ourselves. And that just, I prefer that to raise an animal my, by myself. So that I know what kind of traits and stuff I put into it. And get the right feed so it doesn't grow slowly but fast and powerful. And then it isn't afraid of humans. So that's why I do that. So I'm sitting here on the water trough here. Just don't hope it falls over in the shade because it's quite hot on this lovely winter morning. Um, I got done feeding now and what I've shown you is my basic feeding routine. Once in the morning, once at night and at this point of time I'm only doing it on weekends because our current worker um, helps us because our backhoe is inside, it's not out on a work. So that's my routine, it's quite tough. And with lockdown over, I have to go back to school now. I'm um, back to school, so I'm grateful that he's here to help me. But he's out, so I'm going to take over this week with both feeding rations. And I hope this gives you an idea of how to feed your animals on a small homestead intensively, which means you're going to make more money. It's a little bit more work, not a little bit, a lot more work. But for me personally, it's worth it and quite rewarding to see animal grow from being a little lamb to a full grown animal that you can send off to the butcher and have that meat in your fridge to eat yourself and taste your hard work on a good scarf choppy as we call it in Afrikaans on a braai. I want to thank you all for watching this far if you did. I don't believe many people do. But don't forget to like and subscribe and I want to leave a huge thank you to everyone that supports me on this channel. Um it's still growing and I hope we reach many more people on the know about of agriculture and make people more aware of what's going on in agriculture in South Africa. So thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. Go and watch my other videos and I'll see you later.